visiting with Emma Abbott, she and Paid for a Fling won the <laughs> the sale incentive side pot, the 3D in the second go um, of our open race at Pink Buckle held in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And Emma, this is this is kind of a neat story. This horse uh, came into your program not that long ago, but I'd love to know how things have been going since you did start riding him. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, he came in, a good friend of mine had him and uh, brought him in, and I've really enjoyed him. Uh, they've spent a lot of time, uh, they've ranged off of him, and she's brought him through the cell program, and um, he's been roped off of and barrels off of, and just a great all-round horse. I've really enjoyed him, and a very handsome guy, so <laughs> everyone ask about him if you need that long up on him, so cool guy. Yes, he is. He's a gorgeous, he's buckskin roan, is that right? He is, he is. He's, uh, when you first see him, he just looks buckskin, and then when you get to look at him, he is. He's a buckskin wrong. Um, very, very pretty, and you know, it makes the same trip every time, and it's you know, such a, a nice experience to get to run at that kind of money. Um, you know, even though I probably wrote him a little bit conservative, because he was in so many incentives, <laughs> that uh, we just wanted to be clean, so it sure paid off. <laughs> Absolutely. What, uh, what was it about this horse that really fit you in your style? Um, you know, I just think that he's very willing. Um, I don't have to tune on him a whole lot. Um, uh, me and some other folks actually partners with him, so if he's going to be something that I'm going to somewhat on, he's got to be something fairly easy because I put the other horses kind of in front of them. So he was very willing, didn't require a whole lot of um, tons of time out of me. Um, just you know, He just needed some consistency, and um, she just didn't have that time to give to him current time in our life and so I was glad to be there and um, really enjoyed it. Awesome well we're so happy that this nice Irish pay gilding found his way into your barn. I would love to talk a little bit more about you and your program so tell us like where's home for you, um, what do your days look like and talk to us about your training program. <laughs> For sure. Um, so my address is Bluffdale, but then it's also uh, Morgan Mill. We're about 15 miles north of Stephenville, Texas. Um, uh, my husband works here as well. We are both self-employed. He's a horse dentist, and then he does barns, and um, he's actually been putting in uh, the rubber floors. Everyone's been enjoying that, so he just did one for sure. And all the other days, <laughs> or maybe that was the good luck charm. So, um, but uh, we work here. I've got a really nice facility and um, we really try to tailor whatever the horses you know needs are I feel like they're all individuals and I try to really need that um, a lot of horses come in for fraternity training or in young horses and I try to make people like horse they're not necessarily a fraternity horse but I try to make them a really good product at the end so that um, everyone can enjoy and ride later for years to come I sell a lot of horses as well um, a lot of people fly in from out of state um, and I really try to make sure that they get a fit uh, for their lifestyle when they go home so that they can have fun and win. Wonderful. Well, how how have events like Pink Buckle and Ruby Buckle sort of changed, um, or have they changed, your program throughout the year in terms of your schedule, what fraternities you go to, how you make those kinds of scheduling decisions? For sure. Well, you don't want to miss this one. <laughs> so that's, that's number one. You want to make sure that um, that that you're headed to get through. So it's it's quite a, an event. I mean, a lot of events you go to that if you don't have a great first round, you're kind of throwing your sucker in the dirt. But this one, like, man, you're, you're going to hit somewhere. It's like, I kind of call it bingo, but this is like a lottery. Like, it's awesome. It's very exciting. Um, and they also, you know, I love the class that they put. There's always flowers, and they just really tailor everything to, you know, make it a really classy event. So... Um, I think it's great for the horse world. It makes horses worth a lot of money. I think it's pulling families together because they have the youth, and they have um, they also have the owner rider side pot. So I feel like it's you know it's keeping families together too to come to these big events. Um, my parents uh, was raised in a rodeo horse environment, and um, they still come. They still help. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, so does my husband and everyone else. So I, I think it keeps families together. And I think. Um, but everyone stays very tight. So. Yes, that's such a good point. I love that you brought up that, you know, because of the array of categories and, and things, um, there is something for everybody. So that's that's very cool. And it's Absolutely. Been, it's been fun to see 
um, even some of the youth competitors yeah. coming and up, it's nice too. coming up through the years, and and then now entering derbies or futurities on their on their newer horses. Oh yeah, and the cool thing is, is you know the the pink buckles is paying the same for the three D or the four D, and just like uh, you know some of these horses aren't ready to go run in the one D, so we don't have to put as much pressure on them. We're just going to make smooth runs and let those horses develop into themselves mm -hmm. um, versus you know maybe put too much pressure on them that you know they don't last for years and years to come. So that's awesome for those horses and for like I said for the families to come. So you know those horses can go on and and be. You know, versus for use later or you know, older or whatever. You emphasized um, that it's important to you to have a good product at the end, that you want a safe, solid, sane barrel horse at the end of your training program. So how do you ensure <laughs> how do you ensure that that happens? What do you do to really tailor your program to the horse's uh, time schedule instead of your own? Um, for one, I think I have really good owners um, that trust in my program. Um, you know, some horses are going to take a little bit longer. Um, younger years, I probably thought that I could train through pain. I can train anything, you know, and I do think those horses will tell you, you know, if something's not feeling right. I don't feel like horses sit in stalls and come up with things to do that irritates us. So if there's, they've been a good horse for a long time or they've been a good horse since they were two and then they start doing something that's out of character for them, I do think we have to listen to them, whether it's their diet or, or you know, leg lameness or, you know, something going on, um, I do think they will talk, to, not necessarily talk to you, but I mean, I do think that they'll tell you things that, um, that if we'll pick up on it, you know, we can adjust our program. And, you know, I feel like I'm a chameleon in some ways that I uh, adapt to whatever they are needing. So sometimes I don't ride any horse the same way. I ride uh, whatever it is they need. Um, like this past horse, you know, he needs I just want him in a, a sample, and that's great. Love that. Probably my favorite way is just to have not much on there. But sometimes they don't, you know, always fit that. Um, and so I, I think I have to humble myself sometimes. And, you know, whatever, we, you know, meets their needs. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think that's what makes them um, stay sane is want to, you know, take my time and make sure um, that I've done all my slow work and I've got my, you know, basics done. Um, but then I also listen to them as the process goes. Like if they need a week off, then take a break. Um, let's you know, give them a break. And if we need to go around the pasture a minute, then let's do that too. So, Wonderful. Well, really that, listening to them. <laughs> that is such good advice. Uh, we're, we're so thrilled for you. Thank you so much for coming to Pink Buckle. Uh, we're excited for your success, and we hope to see you at many more events in the future. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Glad to be there. <laughs>